for inviting us to share the key messages within this document. This document complements and builds upon the celebratory approach to SEND assessment in the early years. I would like to introduce Amy and I and share how we got engaged in writing the document for the DFE. I'm Angela Proger, one of the joint heads at Penguin Centre in Corby. I've worked at the centre for 32 years in various roles. I have always been passionate about working with children and families on the edge of social exclusion and giving children a voice and choice. Amy Devine is our SEND support worker. Amy has spent the majority of her career working in early years with a specific focus on SEND. She's passionate about getting it right for children and finding a way to include all children, regardless of their need or any financial challenges. Our work over the years has drawn us to working with children with SEND and their families. We've set up groups and services and implemented training for staff and parents. We are both strong advocates for children with SEND. So why a celebratory approach? Our start point is always to acknowledge where the child has come from and what they are already able to do. We should feel honoured that parents are willing to share their personal stories with us. As practitioners, we need to hold in mind that children's learning does not begin when they join our settings. Learning takes place in children's homes each and every day. Parents are their child's first and most powerful educators. Working in a celebratory way can help everyone to see the best in the child and help steer away from the things that a child cannot do and may never be able to achieve. I would like to share an overview of the celebratory approach to working with children with SEND. The document was developed in line with the reforms of the Early Years Foundation stage. The document has a specific focus on working with children with SEND and their families. We must never see the child in isolation. The aim of the document is to provide additional information, exemplars and links to tools and or services to support our practice. We hope to enhance practitioners' knowledge and skills when working collaboratively with parents and or external partners to achieve the best outcomes for children. How can we support children to fulfil their learning potential? Equality of opportunity must remain at the forefront of our minds and be the catalyst for what we do next. We must get to know all children really well. Children must not be defined by their needs. We need to be courageous and be aspirational for all children. We need to remove any barriers that get in the way when working with parents and build up positive relationship with partners to ensure children receive support in a responsive and timely manner. And finally, for all early years practitioners to offer additional and differentiated support in a celebratory way. What have we learned from the reforms in the EYFS? There is an expectation that settings design their own curriculum. What a bonus to be able to think about the children in our communities and what is needed to enrich their development and learning and life experiences. The framework does not prescribe any particular teaching approach. We must also be mindful of the importance of language and communication as we want all children to be effective communicators. We may need to learn some new ways to communicate too. For example, Makaton, PEX, and children's own words, gestures or signs. In terms of practitioners, we must spend less time undertaking paperwork and more time working directly with young children. Practitioners need to feel confident when using their professional judgments to make assessments. And providers must provide, put appropriate arrangements in place for the supervision of staff who have contact with children and families. Getting to know children is crucial. We believe that home visits to all families are, is paramount and it helps to gain an understanding of the family context and gives parents a chance to share their stories in their own homes. We can find out about the child's interests and what they are motivated by, learn what the child can already do and hear about their strengths. Prior to starting in our settings, it's important to know what support the child might need and how they will transition. And when the child starts in our setting, it's important that we give the child time to settle and adjust to the setting and staff before we begin to make our professional judgments. Thank you for listening. I'd now like to pass you over to Amy to continue the rest of the presentation.
When working with young children in SEND and their families, it is important that you do not work in isolation. Working collaboratively with colleagues and external partners will enhance the support you can offer to children and their families, but will also give an opportunity for you to build upon your own skills and expertise. As well as working with parents, for example, SEND support service, medical professionals, educational psychologists and area SEND codes, your local authority will have a local offer that should outline all of the support service that are current and relevant to children with SEND. The local offer is also a good point of reference for parents. When working with children with SEND, it can be easy to slip towards a deficit model of what the child cannot do. We want all children to be recognised for what they can do and how we can best support their interests and hooks. The EYFS states that staff should spend less time engaging in paperwork and more time in direct contact with children. We absolutely agree that staff should spend valuable and meaningful time with all children. However, for children with SEND to receive the support that they may need to allow them to fulfil their potential and have full access to the provision, we as practitioners will be expected to evidence whether the child needs support. Local authorities will set their own thresholds and referral pathways, for example, in our local authority. The expectation is that we complete a one-page profile, local authority assessment tools and evidence that we have already initiated the graduated response. Once you have demonstrated that you have tried to support the child and have the documentation to share with them, that this will determine whether children will receive additional support and or high needs funding. Funding must not prevent a child accessing provision or receiving the support that they need. I would like to share a case study with you of a child who has recently joined us here at Penn Green. We used a celebratory approach to working with children with SEND to guide our practice and inform our assessment process. Victoria arrived at Penn Green in July of this year, following her parents completing an application form for a nursery space. Victoria and her family were completely unknown to the centre prior to her arrival in nursery. Victoria has a diagnosis of Leber's disease and is certified as severely blind. On arrival, parents made us aware that currently only medical professionals are involved with Victoria. Victoria is due to be transitioning to school in September 2022. In order to get to know Victoria and her family, the SEND support worker and an early years practitioner who has been appointed as Victoria's family worker visited Victoria at home numerous times over the space of two weeks. The time was also spent contacting the medical professionals currently involved with Victoria to gather them for medical viewpoints. The information gathered within the first two weeks determined what we needed to do next. We have only one academic year with Victoria before she goes to school. After taking time to ensure Victoria's family completely understood and agreed with our plan for next steps, we prioritised our immediate actions. Those actions were to plan for Victoria's first day in nursery, begin the settling in process, set short term targets for Victoria in collaboration with her parents, gather evidence to support appropriate referrals, complete the referrals that were immediately necessary, share information regarding the education, health and care plan process with Victoria's family and discuss with them what their hopes were for the support that Victoria would receive in school. Reflecting on Victoria's journey here with us at Penguin, we are able to clearly identify the areas that have significantly improved. Victoria is now settled into her new nursery space. She enjoys coming to nursery and has built good relationships with key adults, as has her mum. Victoria is beginning to move around independently with the aid of a walker or a stick. Victoria and her fam family now have the support of the local authority's visual impairment team and specialist support service, as well as additional funding in nursery provided by the Higher Needs Funding Block. Victoria's family are now in receipt of disability allow allowance and Victoria's younger sister is now receiving genetics testing following concerns raised regarding her visual responses. The SEND team alongside Victoria's family worker are currently in the process of working with Victoria's parents to submit a request for statutory assessment for an education, health and care plan. Victoria and her family are now receiving the support from the services that she has a right and entitlement to. Her sister is receiving the early intervention that she needs and we are well on our way to ensuring that Victoria will have a successful transition to school. The documents that are listed above will support you in your practice. If you haven't already done so, take time to familiarise yourself with them as they will help to guide and shape your practice and your pedagogic approach to working with all young children regardless of their need or complexity. We must not define children by their needs. As practitioners, we need to be aspirational for all children and learn to know what drives their curiosity and puts fire in their belly. I would like to share a quote with you that I've taken from the EYFS. Every child deserves the best possible start in life and the su 
support that enables them to fulfil their potential. Children develop quickly in the early years and a child's experience between birth and five have a major impact on their future life chances. In the early years, we have a big task on our hands to strive to make sure every day counts for all children. So to conclude, I would like to leave you with a provocation. When you're back in your setting working directly with children, particularly children with SEND, ask yourself this question from the child's perspective. Do you let me fly? I truly hope the majority of us can say yes, as this will demonstrate our inclusive practice and aspirations for all in early years. We need to be able to celebrate children's efforts as well as their successes, however small the steps might be. We need to plan for the next steps based on their interests. Thank you very much for your time. If you have any questions or suggestions, please do not hesitate to get in touch with either Angela or myself.